Hi, welcome along to another video. This time we'll be looking at three articles from the 1950s involving the United Kingdom, the UK, United States and Australia. I haven't put any links to this information because it comes from a subscription service of newspaper archives. Starting in the UK, the Yorkshire Observer from October the 29th, 1955. No clouds, so rainmaking bid failed. Under a clear blue sky and in sparkling sunshine, 40 pressmen gathered on the Salisbury Plain yesterday in raincoats. Weathermen of the Air Ministry and the Ministry of Supply were demonstrating the new technique of rainmaking. But there was not a cloud in sight, and so there was no rain. So the Air Ministry was later incorporated by the Ministry of Defence, and also, you would think if the idea is to see clouds, there would be no point going ahead with the experiment when there is not a cloud in sight. But they did. They carried on, even though there was no suitable cloud for the weather modification experiment. Continuing the article, the pressmen stood round a four foot high machine with a chimney burning silver iodide, one ounce of which yields millions of ice crystals. So as mentioned, they've gone ahead with the experiment, even though there was no suitable clouds around for seeding. So the one ounce of silver iodide just went up into the atmosphere, into the sky, and it did not yield millions of ice crystals. But because it did not yield millions of ice crystals, that does not mean that the silver iodide is not in the sky anymore, that it suddenly magically disappears. Accumulation is the key word there. We are talking 67 years ago that this experiment took place, hence why we do have to start considering what sort of accumulative effect this is all having. And to continue, cloud seeding. The crystals were rising invisibly and with no smell into the upper air. Once they have gone high enough to see clouds, rain can be expected. The assistant director of the physical research department of the meteorological office said the great problem is to find out how high the crystals actually go. To help solve it, an auxiliary experiment is being carried out with an RAF barrage balloon thousands of feet up which carries apparatus to test the contents of the atmosphere. The aim of the tests, the experiments demonstrated yesterday are aimed at increasing natural rainfall. Five burners have been placed in a 20 mile line across Salisbury Plain at right angles to the prevailing southwest wind. Usually rain, if any, will fall 50 to 100 miles to the east northeast of the generators. We'll come back to that in a second. That was said by an Air Ministry official. So Mr. Oddy, the Assistant Director, who we mentioned just now, said sooner or later commercial rainmaking is bound to come to this country and the government will have to decide how much control it is going to exercise. So the last paragraph where the assistant director of the physical research department of the meteorological office is clearly stating then in 1955 that the government will have to have some form of regulation legislation for this stuff. And until now, unlike the United States and other countries, there is no actual Weather Modification Act in the UK. As long as you comply with certain laws, you can pretty much do what you want. So the second to last paragraph is where it's time to consider where exactly Salisbury Plain is, if you don't know that. We'll look at that on a map. We'll also look at where Linmouth is, which is 89 miles away from Salisbury Plain well within the 50 to 100 miles expected to be affected by rain and the cloud seeding experiment. Lynmouth, of course, three years earlier, was the subject to a flood in which over 30 people died, which was caused by the RAF and their project Operation Cumulus. So if you think that was happening a couple of years before, they knew they had caused the storm, they knew they had caused the deaths, Three years later, 
the RAF are again involved in monitoring weather modification experiments on Salisbury Plain that, should you have an opposite wind direction, would land that in Lymouth again. And that's really worth thinking about. If that was going on in 1955, don't for one minute believe it's like, oh, we wouldn't do it today. The only difference between 1955 and now is, is you're not being told anything nowadays. In 1955, the news was just the news. No one would have spoken against it. The image accompanying the article says three rainmakers with their apparatus from left to right. Dr. Frank Pasquil, head of the meteorological section at the Ministry of Supply Establishment. Porton, so Porton Down, probably, and his engineer colleague, Mr. Kenneth Sinclair of Salisbury, and Mr. Brian Oddy, Assistant Director of the Meteorological Office in London, who is known as the Chief Rainmaker, over to America. Also from the UK media, the Yorkshire Post and Leeds Mercury, March 5th, 1954, so one year before the article previously. U.S. experiments to make rain. And we'll take in the first paragraph of this article. A total of 200,000 hours of cloud seeding induced rainfall operations was carried out since 1948 in 18 states of the United States and six foreign countries. These operations have consistently resulted in minimum increases in natural rainfall from 20 to 30 percent and that was in 18 states of the United States so a fair few so that's about a quarter of the United States and also six foreign countries none of us have known natural weather so over to Australia then in the evening news also UK media from Wednesday February the 2nd 1955 cloud seeding for rain experiments a new method of cloud seeding by spreading rain-making chemicals over a 200-mile front is being tried out in Australia. The experiments are being watched by US scientists whose efforts at rain-making, meeting with uncertain success, have been declining, writes Reuters correspondent. So, Reuters correspondent, alarm bells ringing, making the I'm Reuters, it's believable statement that the United States efforts at rainmaking not really working out and in fact they're not really doing much with it anymore where we know the most heaviest commercialization in the United States of weather modification technologies began in the 1950s so basically what the Reuters correspondent is saying there about the American situation is a lie so in 1955 hmm, Reuters lying how about that Apologies if I've got the name of the place pronounced wrongly. The new method was recently tried out near Clunkery, Clunkery, Queensland. More than five and a half inches of rain fell where the scientists were working. But further experiments will be made before they can be sure that it would not have fallen without their efforts. The old method was to drop large quantities of chemicals, either dry ice or silver iodide, into individual clouds. At Cloncury, the team flew up to 15,000 feet and spread the chemicals in a fine stream over a front 200 miles wide. Similar experiments are to be made in the next few months. The theory was the work of Dr. Bowen, who is in charge of the Radio Physics Department of the Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organisation. And to finish up, scientists in New South Wales and Arizona, United States, have begun a series of tests designed to provide strong confirmative evidence of Dr. Bowen's theory. These pieces of old information hopefully will confirm for a lot of people that you've always had the cards stacked against you, no one's ever been speaking about this and those that are are setting the foundations for future generations to be able to stop this it will happen sooner or later in the meanwhile look after yourselves take care we'll see you next time